Okay, this is 9.5, simple harmonic motion and damped motion and then combining waves. So it says, build a model for an object on a simple harmonic motion. Consider the diagram below that represents a pendulum. The rest position is also called the equilibrium because this is where the pendulum would stop if there was no outside force on the pendulum. If the pendulum is pulled out and released, it will swing from side to side. Assuming no friction, the vibration of the pendulum can be described as a function of cosine. It says the amplitude of a vibration is the distance from the equilibrium position to its point of greatest displacement, left or right. The period, um, let's scoot up here. The period of a vibrating object is the time required to complete one vibration. That is the time required to go from the rest position or equilibrium to the left, then to the right, and then back to the rest position. Simple harmonic motion is a special kind of vibrational motion in which the acceleration A of the object is directly proportional to the negative of its displacement D from its rest position. That is A equals negative K D where K is greater than zero and K is called the constant of proportionality. Okay. So a simple harmonic motion is also related to circular motion. The diagram shows an object initially placed at A0, so here, moving counterclockwise around the circle at constant angular speed omega. When the object stops at point P, its coordinates at time t are A equals a, uh, x equals A cosine theta, y equals A sine theta. Recall from previous sections that omega equals theta over t, or theta equals omega times t. So by substitution, this pair, these coordinates become a cosine of omega t and a, uh, y equals to a sine omega t. So simple harmonic motion theorem says, an object that moves on a coordinate axis so that its distance d from the origin at time t is given by either d equal a cosine of omega t or d equal to a sine of omega t, where a and omega are greater than zero, are constants, um, where a, okay, a does not have to be greater than zero. It's just a and omega that does have to be greater than zero are constants and it moves a simple harmonic motion. The motion has amplitude a and period t equal to two pi over omega. The frequency f of an object in simple harmonic motion is the number of oscillations per unit of time. Since this is the reciprocal of the definition of the period, the formulas are also reciprocals. So F equals one over T, which is also omega over two pi, again, where omega is greater than zero. So for example, one, it says, suppose that an object attached to a coil spring is pulled down a distance five inches from its rest position and then released. If the time for one oscillation is three seconds, write an equation that relates the displacement of the object from its rest position after T seconds assume no friction. So for this particular um, problem, I forgot I had an extra example in there. So for this particular problem, um, we do know that we're pulling it downward and we know that we're pulling it a distance of five inches downward. So my displacement is going, not my displacement, but my um, a value is going to be a negative five. Again, because it's pulled downward. If it were pulled up, then it would be a positive five, okay? And we can use this as a diagram to explain. So here's zero. This is as if it were in rest position. Now, I'm not great at drawing coils. I just try to draw like little squiggly lines, but you get the idea there. And so this would be five units going upward. This would be five units going downward, right? And so we've pulled this object downward um, 
and now the a is negative five. So um, we can also figure out what omega is because we know that the time for one oscillation and one oscillation is your period, right? So that we know the period is three seconds, which we also know is two pi over omega. So if we multiply both sides of this equation by omega, we get that three omega equals two pi or that omega equals two pi over three. And these are really the only two identifying informations that we need in order to write the equation. However, we do have to decide whether we're talking about cosine or we're talking about sine. And so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how to decipher between the two. So um, A is going to be negative five, and then we're gonna have cosine of two pi over three T or d equals negative five sine of two pi over three t, okay? So it says, um, let's pay attention to the scenario again. So it says we're supposed to relate the displacement d of the object from its rest position after t seconds, okay? So we know that the rest position is zero, and then we wanna see where it is from there. So when t equals zero, actually when t equals zero, because I have pulled it downward, I am here when I start. Okay, and so if I start here, then that means that um, the displacement should be negative five. So which one of these two functions will give me the displacement of negative five units when t is zero. And if you don't already know the answer to that, you can simply plug both of them in your calculator and see which one's going to give you um, the correct response. And I did forget to put my A, which was five, there we go. Delete, there we go. And so this is the one that gives me negative five. If I change my function to sine, notice that my displacement is zero, which means I would have started at the um, rest position. But because I pulled it downward, we're not starting at the rest position. So this one is not the correct function to use. This one is the correct function to use. Now, let's go on to example two. So example two says, the dis suppose the displacement of an object at time t is given by d equal to five sine of three t. So this one's nice. They already gave me the um, function. And because of this type of function, it follows the theorem up here, which is the simple harmonic motion theorem. So when the question says, describe the motion of the object, it is a simple harmonic motion. Because it fits this description here. Now there is another description, which is damped um, motion, but we haven't talked about that one yet, okay? So here the answers will be simple harmonic motion. When it asks, what is the maximum displacement? max displacement is going to be at the absolute value of a and so in this case a is five and the absolute value of five is just five then what is the time required for one oscillation we know that that's uh, the period which is two pi over omega and in this case this is omega so two pi over three, and that cannot be reduced. So that's the answer. And then what is the frequency? The frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So you just flip this over and you get three over two pi. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the next concept in this um, section, which is called simple harmonic damped motion, okay? Uh, so it says, analyze an object of damped motion. In damped motion, the pendulum seen earlier 
will continue to swing, but in many cases will be affected by friction or some other resistive force, causing the energy to be removed from the system and thereby dampening its motion. So yes, the pendulum will go like this, but eventually it'll start to slow down and eventually get to its stop at its resting point. So as a result, the amplitude um, will decrease with time. Um, and it's the same for a spring. When you pull the spring down, it will bounce back and forth, up and down, up and down, but eventually slow down and stop at its resting position. So the following sinusoidal function describes this behavior where the amplitude and the period are affected. Damp motion theorem, the displacement D of an oscillating object from its rest position at time T is given by this function here. It says where B is the dampening factor and dampening coefficient or dampening coefficient. So it's the same thing. And M is the mass of the oscillating object. Here, A is the displacement at time T and 2T over omega, of course, is the period under simple harmonic motion, no dampening. Now, we don't go into much about this other than just explaining the situation of what's happening. So if you do see a function like this, um, where it has E and it has a coefficient or an, an exponent here, um, understand that it's gonna ask you what kind of motion it is. And in that case, it's going to be damped motion. And if you don't see that E factor in your displacement formula, then it is a simple harmonic function. But other than that, they're not really gonna ask us too many questions in this chapter about the damped motion theorem. You will get into it further when you get to calculus, but for right now, it's just kind of introducing the concept, um, but you'll further study it in uh, future semesters. Okay. So here, the last concept in this section is graphing the sum of two functions. And so the way we do that is, um, especially you, when they say graph the sum of two functions, they are assuming that you're doing this by hand and not just typing it in the calculator and then the calculator and figuring out how to do it, okay? They're really trying to get you to understand how to do this by hand, okay? And so we already know that if you have a sum of two functions, um, you can just separate it into two separate functions. And so that's kind of how we graph them. So you start off with your function and you notice that this could be like F1 and this could be F2 because those are the two terms. And then what they're doing is they're adding the Y coordinates to get the graph. So this is what's happening. You pick x values. This sine wave is going to have a, um, a period of 2 pi, right? That's the typical period of a sine wave. So what I've done is I've used x values that will um, constitute that period. And then what I've done is I've plugged all of those x values into f1, which is just x, so they stay the same. And then f2, I plugged them into the sine, and I got all of these y values. Now, if I want the y values of the complete function f, I would have to add those two y values together. So 0 plus 0 is 0, pi over 2 plus 1 is about 2.5, pi plus 0 is pi, 3 pi over 2 minus 1 or plus a negative 1 is about 3.74, I'm sorry, 71, and then 2 pi plus 0 is 2 pi. So we end up with the original x value and this y value for the whole function. We end up with this x value and this y value. We end up with this x value and this y value. We end up with this x value that we started with and this as the final y value. And then this as the x value and this as the final y value. And so what they've done is they've graphed all three on there. So they graphed x, which is 0, 0, that's this point, pi over 2, pi over 2, pi, pi, that's this, 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, here, 2 pi and 2 pi, that's here. So it should look like a line, but because I didn't do it on graph paper, it's a little crooked. Um, then they plotted F1, or that was F1, right? This line was F1. Then they plot the sine wave, so 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, 0, uh, pi and zero, 
3 pi over 2 and negative 1, 2 pi and um, 0. It should actually be down here. Knew that looked a little bit off. Okay. So then there's the whole sine wave, and it should continue to go, actually go in that direction, right? Because it's going to be another continual curve. Um, so that's the sine wave. This one's F2. But when you add the y values together, you get these points, and these are the points here. So 0, 0, pi over 2 and 2.5, pi and pi, 3 pi over 2 and 3.71, and then 2 pi and 2 pi. Um, and so then you get this kind of curve. So it's basically this curve, but now it's kind of like along the path of the line. Okay. And again, notice that the period is 2 pi. Where did that come from? It came from one of the original functions. Okay. And the same concept can be done for the multiplication of functions. So if you had, for existence, for example, f of x equal to. Um, something like sine of x or x squared times sine of x, right? Then f1 would be uh, x squared and f2 would be sine of x. So you would fit, because the period of this is 2 pi, you would go 0 to 2 pi, and then you would find all of the x squared values, you'd find all of the sine x values, and then you'd multiply those y values together so that you could get the final um, points and what that's supposed to look like, okay? And so because of that, I wanted to do um, this problem, but this problem doesn't ask us to do it with the multiplication method, okay? So they don't want us to do it using the method of multiplying y values. They are specifically telling us which method to use. And that's important that we're following those directions. So it says use the product to some formula to rewrite f of x, then use the adding y coordinates method to graph f of x. So they don't want us to use the product of y coordinates method. They want us to actually add. And we can't add currently because this is a product. So if we use the the product to sum formula for sine and sine, we get one half of cosine of 3x minus 2x minus cosine of 3x plus 2x. And so then if I simplify that, I get one half. I'm going to distribute this one half at the same time. So I get cosine um, of x, and here I get one half cosine of 5x, okay? So then that means that f1 is going to be 1 half cosine of x, and f2 is going to be 1 half cosine of 5x. Now remember the period here is 2 pi over omega, which in this case is 1, so just 2 pi. The period here is 2 pi over omega, which is 5 in this case, so 2 pi over 5. And when you're trying to decide which period to go with, go with the larger period. I'm getting some reflection going on here. There we go. So we have to go with this one because this is the larger of the two periods. So then I'm going to make my chart. And I'm going to use, and so that I have enough coordinates, I'm going to go by pi force. So 2 pi force is pi over 2, 3 pi force, 4 pi force is pi, 5 pi force, 6 pi force is 3 pi over 2, 7 pi force, and 8 pi force is 2 pi. And so then we're going to do Let me just make my chart here. So it doesn't look like I'll need anything below this line. And so it's not asking me to graph all the pieces. The computer is just asking me to graph F. Okay, so it just wants me to graph this, but again, I've converted it to this now. And so this is what I'm trying to graph. Okay, so if I say this is one half cosine of X, 
This is one half cosine of five X. And then here I'm gonna add them, or actually I'm going to subtract them together. It depends on how you wanna do it. You can, it says adding method. So that means I need to make this one negative and then I can add them together. Because if I don't make this one negative, then I would actually be taking these y values and then subtracting these y values. But because I made it negative, I can in fact add them together, okay? And so then here, I'm just gonna put the points in point forms. So for the cosines, when I plug this into this formula, I get one half or 0.5. Here, when I plug that in, I get about 0.35. When I plug this in, I get zero. When I plug this in, I get negative 0.35. When I plug that in, I get negative 0.5. This one, I get negative 0.35. Here I get zero. Here I get 0.35. And here I get 0.5. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that you just choose multiple choices. So as long as I figure out what the coordinates should be, then I can, um, find the correct graph. Now, the homework is multiple choice and the test is multiple choice. However, I, you are always required to submit your work so that you can demonstrate understanding of the specific topic and the method that's being described to use um, in the directions. So if you have a problem like this on the review or the test and you're not doing this chart, you just click the graph, you will not get the credit for that problem. You'll get one point out of however many points those problems are worth. So it's very important that you practice making this chart so that you will be proficient at it at the time of the test. Don't just go, oh, I can just plug in the X values. I could plug in all these guys into this and verify what the y values are to be able to select the correct graph. That is true, but if you try to do that on the test, that's not following the directions. And so you will not receive credit for work that does not follow the directions. So then the points here will be the original x and then this final y. The original x and the final y. Original x and final y original x and final y, original x, final y, original x and final y, original x, final y, original x and final y, and original x and final y. And so then if I draw this, let's see. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, this will be pi. One, two, three, four, this will be two pi. And I'm gonna do um, 0.5 and one. Just to give me some space so that I can actually see the graph, okay? So zero, zero is my first point. Pi over four and 0.7. So it's about right here. Oh, I'm too far to the right. Pi over four and seven. Now, um, pi over two and zero, three pi over four and negative seven, negative point seven. So we get about right here. And then, um, Oh, I put it too far. It should be three pi over four and then 0.7, then pi of and zero. Here we have this point again, and then here, and then here we have this guy. Oops, too high. And then we have two pi. So it kind of goes like up, but then down, and then down again, and then up, and then down. Okay. And this would be one entire um, picture. Now, because of this period being so small, it is possible that there's more things happening in each region. So there might be a little bit more wiggles 
here and a little bit more wiggles there, we don't know exactly, okay? Because I picked some pretty large values. But what you can do is on your um, choices is make sure that these values are in those graphs that are in your choices. But you might notice that there are some extra little waves in here that we didn't get because we didn't go by like fifths all the way to two pi, just because I felt that was way too many um, values. I mean, I would have had 10 X values in my chart there and I already have eight. So it would have been just a little bit more, okay? But very important to do. So that is the end of this section. Hopefully that is enough to help you to figure out your homework assignments. And as always, if you need any extra help, just send me a picture of the problems you're working on and then send me um, a picture of what you've done so far and I can be able to help you figure out the problem.